we're asked to divide the rational expressions, then state the domain. We divide rational expressions just like we divide fractions. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So let's write this first quotient as a multiplication problem. Instead of dividing by 27x to the third over 30, we will multiply by 30 over 27x cubed. So we'll have 6x squared divided by five times 30 divided by 27x cubed. This product is equal to the quotient. To multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then simplify the fraction. If the numerator is 6x squared times 30, the denominator is five times 27x cubed. Before we determine these products though, we'll write each term using prime factors so that we can easily identify the common factors between the numerator and denominator that will simplify to one. So we'll write six x squared as two times three times x times x. The prime factorization of 30 is two times three times five. In the denominator, five is prime. The prime factorization of 27 is three factors of three. So 27 x cubed is three times three times three times three factors of x. And now we'll identify all the common factors between the numerator and denominator. They share a common factor of three, two common factors of x, another common factor of three, and a common factor of five. We know any non-zero value divided by itself is equal to one, and therefore all these common factors simplify to one. Three divided by three is equal to one, x divided by x is equal to one, and so on. The remaining factors give us the simplified rational expression. In the numerator we have two times two, which equals four. In the denominator we have three times x, which equals three x. So the given quotient simplifies to four divided by three x. However, we still need to determine the domain. Determining the domain of a quotient is a little bit different than determining the domain of a product. We begin with all real numbers and then exclude the values that make either the denominator equal to zero or make the numerator of the divisor equal to zero. The reason the numerator of the divisor cannot be zero is because division by zero is undefined. So both fractions would have division by zero if the denominators are zero, and we'd also have division by zero if the divisor was zero, which happens when the numerator is equal to zero. Notice both the denominators of the fractions are constants, and therefore they'll never be zero but looking at the numerator of the divisor, notice how if x equals zero, the numerator would be zero, and we'd be dividing by zero, which is undefined, which means you must exclude zero from the domain. So the domain is all reals except zero, which we often just state as x can't equal zero. This means the domain is all reals except zero. Now let's look at the second example. Again, instead of dividing by this fraction, we will multiply by the reciprocal. So we would have eight y squared divided by the quantity y plus three times the reciprocal of this fraction, which is the quantity y squared minus four y minus 21 divided by four y to the fourth. Now that we have a product, we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. The numerator is eight y squared times the quantity y squared minus four y minus 21 the denominator is the quantity y plus three times four y to the fourth. Let's write that as four y to the fourth times the quantity y plus three. And now we'll factor the numerator and denominator. Let's write eight y squared as two times two times two times y times y. And now we'll factor y squared minus four y minus 21 into two binomial factors. Terms in the first positions are y and y. The second terms are the factors of negative 21 that add to negative four, which are negative seven and positive three. So one factor is y minus seven, and one factor is y plus three. In the denominator, we'll write four y to the fourth as two times two times four factors of y, and the quantity y plus three does not factor. And now let's look for the common factors between the numerator and denominator that will simplify to one. They share two factors of two in common, as well as two factors of y, and a factor of y plus three. Again, all the common factors 
between the numerator and denominator simplify to one, because any non-zero value divided by itself equals one. So two divided by two is one here, as well as the remaining quotients. The remaining factors give us the simplified rational expression. In the numerator we have two times the quantity y minus seven. In the denominator we have y times y, which equals y squared. So this is our simplified quotient. Now we need to determine the domain. To determine the domain, we begin with all real numbers and then exclude the values that make either denominator and the original quotient equal to zero, as well as any values that make the numerator of the divisor here equal to zero. Well, y plus three is equal to zero and y equals negative three, so we know y can't equal negative three. The factors of y squared minus four y minus 21 are shown here. We have y minus seven times the quantity y plus three. We've already excluded negative three. Notice positive seven makes y minus seven equal to zero, so y can't equal seven. And then notice that four y to the fourth is zero when y equals zero, so we must also exclude y equals zero. So the domain is all real numbers except negative three, zero, and seven, or we can say y can't equal negative three, y can't equal positive seven, and y can't equal zero. I hope you found this helpful.